centertonursery.com. It gives a guide on how to pinch prune your perennials. And this is all it said, and we're going to expand on this. In season, pinch early season for branching, then leave be off season. Shear back, leaving green crown of foliage. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now let's explain what yeah. that means. You know, that's like talking to a doctor. Uh, you know? yeah, it's you like, saying? you don't understand what I'm telling you? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> it's not my lingo. <laughs> um, anyway, so what you want to do is that, sure, if you want to clean it up after the season, that's fine. But you want to do more of thinning and because pr- because the problem with asters is they get powdery mildew. Yeah. They get powdery mildew real easy. Mm-hmm. And that powdery mildew is not like most people think that it's an issue with them being dry or wet and with them being too wet. It actually comes on to them when they're more dry and that they um, they need to be thinned out. And it's all about air circulation. Like so many of the diseases that we get in plants, it's all about air circulation. So pruning back your aster plant, yes, you want that nice pretty dome, but you want to thin out some branches and that's all about powdery mildew. What you're going to do is go down and just open it up a little by cutting down at the base in springtime. So that means when it flushes out and it's about six inches tall or so, that's when you're going to go ahead and you're going to pinch some of the inside out so that it has that air circulation. And then you're going to do and shear off some of the top. And you're going to do that about three times. And that again, that you she, we call it shearing, but it's also it's really the the actual horticultural term is pinching. pinching. Is pinching? I almost pinched Julio just now. <laughs> uh, pinching, uh, and again, it, it's making sure that you're trying to get the most flowers from one plant. So you're trying to make that dome that you bought because often, like you'll if you leave leave it go, like we talked. She she mentioned mums. Yeah. Like if you leave mums go, they turn into this like gangly. You know, it's not weedy. very pretty. Yeah, yeah weedy. Yeah. No, Julio said weedy. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So, again, you're going to start, you know, pinching it. You're going to mm-hmm. do it three times from the, the first time that you get about six inches of growth. Pink it, pinch it back a third. Mm-hmm. Let it grow to to another um, probably six or eight inches. Pinch back a third oh, of yeah. that. And then that final pinch, which would be sometime in, in July. I wouldn't go past July 15th. And that that and again, you're you're thinning it at the same time because there'll be branches that are coming from the center of the plant that may be brown or, or you can tell that just aren't are struggling. You're going to open it up so that gets air circulation. And so that's the aster. So very similar, very similar to, to, to mums. Um, and it's all about making sure that it's it's branched and it has, therefore, more blooms. Pretty easy. Now, Montauk daisies, a lot of people are confused because, oh, they're Shasta daisies. It's like, no, they're Montauk daisies. Montauk. Uh, they look similar. Mm-hmm. Um, Nippon daisies, they're, they're a type of Nippon daisy. Uh, and that where for a strong fall bloom, because that's when they bloom naturally, you're going to prune the plants to about six inches tall in early spring because they can take a, a pretty good amount of cold. Um, so whatever's left from from the fall growth cycle, take it back to about six inches. And then um, you're going to do that again. And I, you know, keep it on the same schedule. Just do it twice for these, uh, for the Montauk daisies and do it again in July. And that uh, usually the July 15th would be the the latest. Last last time. Yeah. And that you're going to have a really nice full plant rather than again, they can get a little bit out of control. Um, If you want to split your plants, you do it probably every three years is best. Um, So just make sure that that they don't get too gangly. Um, Again, they're going to flower for a long time. They they may lose their foliage after a frost or a hard freeze. Um, You know, that usually takes them out, but we're talking, that's going to be November, Mm -hmm. you know, but in this area anyway. So uh, they're great Great perennial uh, Montauk daisies, Montauk, Long Island. Long Island, yeah. yeah Montauk, Long Island. So, uh, and it just will create a mound oh, yeah. of 
three foot three across. Foot, yeah. They're, three. They get big. Yeah, so keep big. that in mind. Yeah. So if it looks like that they're getting out of control, yeah. well, guess what? They, they might be. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be time to split them yeah. um, in the spring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they're uh, – watch your space on them. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's they a business great. by us where they have a – they have a low billboard on the ground, uh-huh. and they have Montauk daisies across the the, oh, yeah. the front of it. The front of it? Yeah, <laughs> we planted them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we planted. And they wanted the landscape to look good in fall, and so oh, yeah, we yeah. planted That's it. Nice. And they kept them there. And man, uh-huh. they are gigantic. Yeah, they're big. <laughs> they're, huh? Let's just say they're not doing any of this. No. <laughs> they should be. No, they they should, should be because they would look great. Yeah, they're right. a little bit gangly. Gangly. <laughs> so anyway. But they will, okay. they will respond to pruning, okay? Yeah. And again, you don't want to do it any time after the 15th of July or else you'll be delaying yeah. that flower, that Later flower on. formation. So, mm-hmm. all right. Wow. Any questions, Julio? No. Okay. No? Any comments? Uh, no. They, no? No. We did. Uh, Nailed it? Nailed it. Nailed well, it. Yeah. All right. We'll be back right <laughs> after this.